Very nice to be able to speak to you from this rather special place. I'm Thomas Shepherd, I'm the Chair of the Trustees of the Bath Preservation Trust and this is a... Caroline Kay and I'm Chief Executive of the Bath Preservation Trust. Perhaps Caroline you can explain where we are. Yeah, we're in the drawing room at Number One Royal Crescent, one of the grander rooms in a grand house um, in our museum at Number One. Um, a room that has been largely asleep for the year, um, but it's nice to be able to use it for this purpose. And in fact today, Thomas, was the day that you were going to be holding a chairman's drinks party for our members and supporters and friends. And although our friends would not be allowed on this side of the barricade, we would have had a hundred people or more who would be coming to listen to the things that we've done in the last year, the successes we've had, the thank yous, the congratulations, all the things that any organisation likes to talk about at Christmas as you prepare to look forward to a new year, but look back with pride at what you'd achieved. Um, hasn't really been like that, has it, Caroline? <laughs> well, like everyone else, our world came to an end in the middle of March um, when we were obliged to close the museums, to go home, um, to work from home and to do everything online. And of course, there's some things you can't do online and you can't open your doors to the public as we've been used to be doing for the last 50 years. Um, so we um, immediately suffered an enormous loss in our income and um, had to address that pretty fast. And, and I have to say that we were saved by um, the fact that we went out to our friends and members immediately and they were very generous. Um, various grants and so on became available as the year progressed, which allowed us to um, remove what was a genuine existential threat to the organisation. Um, mm. And I'm afraid we had, very sadly, to lose some staff over the summer in order to reduce our cost base to something that we thought we could afford not just for this year, but for the year ahead when things come back slowly. So it was a very hard time at that point. And I think that one of the things we recognised reasonably early on, that this was a permanent change that we were facing and not just a temporary blip that we had to work with. And so we've been very much shoulder to the wheel since March to think about what the future holds for us and how we can plan for that future. So it has, as you rightly say, Caroline, been really difficult, not just staff, but volunteers as well, who would be in this room normally. That's right, and, and the change that even when we were able to reopen the museum in the summer, we had to recognise that putting individuals in rooms as well as socially distancing all our um, visitors was simply not possible. And it pushed for a change in the way we present number one that we had to implement immediately. And I think what's been gratifying, if one tries to find good things out of a terrible time, is how everybody has really rallied round and helped us. Very early on, our supporters have been very generous to us and we raised over £30,000 from people who really wanted us to make sure we could carry on doing things that really matter to them. Our staff, recognising the pressures on them and their jobs, nonetheless, everybody did their bit and everybody worked hard. And the trustees have been relentlessly involved in meeting and trying to take uh, all the right decisions, which is terribly hard, uh, to face what is an unknown end. We don't know when this would come to an end, and certainly in the spring it seemed like it would carry on for a very long time. So lots of people have really put their shoulders to the wheel. Some we've had to say goodbye to, others we hope that we can go to in the future to ask for further support. We owe them all a great debt of gratitude, don't we, Caroline? Absolutely, and, and, and we want very much to keep everyone as a member of our family in some shape or mm. form. And we're delighted that both some former staff and also some, some of our volunteers have decided to stay with us as members over the next year. And we hope that may stretch out into the future as well. One of the really important things in the middle of all of this is that those of you who read Bath Matters would have noticed that I was thanking Caroline for her long period of service as she set off to plan her next part of her career. Uh, but it became very clear to us both in March that actually we needed somebody strong at the helm. And I asked Caroline if she would stay. And as you can see from this film, she's still with us. And I'm incredibly grateful that she has given up that year of her life that she had thought would be enjoyable somewhere else to help us through this bumpy waters and Caroline, I'm really grateful. For you. Thank you very much. I couldn't have done anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the good thing is that is that lots of stuff did carry on over the last year. Mm. And um, our planning work carried on um, to the extent that we won an award for it, um, which we, we received only a couple of weeks ago, but it was for way, the way the planning team and the volunteer committee that supports it had rallied together and kept on going um, because planning applications don't stop just because there's a pandemic. Mm. And in fact, 
there is danger there, I say, it, that things might slip through in difficult circumstances. So it's a, a particularly important that our vigilance carried on and that we found new ways to talk to people. And the Planning Institute really commended the team on what they'd done and been so front foot in working out how you made sure that the oversight that we bring wasn't lost because of the pandemic and the changed way that planning committees meet and all the other the intricacies of planning policy, much of which has appeared in the current year. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, it was us bashing on the door of the council, actually, to make sure that the public could still participate in planning meetings that made it move from, first of all, being a read out statement to then active participation in the meeting as, as we would have done in real time, in, in, in physical form. Um, now on Zoom, mm -hmm. as everything nowadays is. Um, there's a word we didn't think we knew before this year was out. Um, and then the other thing we have, of course, is the World Heritage Enhancement Fund yes. that has carried on doing little bits of work. As soon as contractors were allowed to do things out on the pavements, we had more street signs being restored. Um, and we've had a lovely piece of work that we've supported down by the canal, which makes a mm -hmm. safe passage up from the canal to Bathwick Hill. Um, um, look right as well, which um, that work carries on quietly in the background as well. And Bath has in fact looked its best during well, the lockdown. Uh, it, it's always slightly embarrassing when you say it doesn't look lovely with no people in it. And of course people are very important, but we did get some fantastic photography really from is. that period mm. where you could actually see the city free of cars. Streets free of cars are something we could aspire to, mm. even if we aspire to bringing people back. The other bit of good news is around Beckford. I mean, there's lots happening there, isn't Yes, it? and we started this very, very long year um, with the very good news that we got our development lottery grant. And um, although obviously some bits of work have slowed up, it's carried on. Um, we've been able to engage with the public in different ways. Um, and we're just starting with the serious work of appointing an architectural and professional team to go mm. with that. Um, to pr push the work forward. Yeah, I mean, so th there are exciting things happening in spite of the limitations put on us all. And, that, and we've been working very hard with the support of a grant that we've had uh, to help us plan the future, to look with a clear-eyed confidence towards, towards what does a, a post-COVID world look like for museums like ours and for the things that we do. And the trustees and the staff have been very much engaged in that process. And I'm really pleased to tell you that there's a clear-eyed confidence about what the future will look like when we get to the future. Uh, the future is going to be difficult for the first part uh, as, as we get used to social distancing probably extending for longer than we thought and possibly also with reduced international visitor numbers. But we've got plans which I hope will make people want to come and see what we're doing here in this lovely building but also engage with the other work we do. And I think there's plenty to be really confident about and we are of course incredibly grateful for the support that we've received from government, uh, from local government and uh, indeed from the lottery and our donors. Without this we wouldn't be sitting here having that conversation. That's absolutely right and um, uh, it's become something of a joke of the last year that I'm a resident pessimist but I feel, um, I feel positive that the Trust now has a future and has a good and interesting future ahead of it. Um, and there is lots of change to come in the next 10 years and I think we should be excited about the fact that there is change to come in the future and what the Trust can offer in future years. And that change should not just be dictated by Covid, but should be dictated by the right things for the City and for the Trust, and the, the Trustees are really engaged with that. So it has been an extraordinary year. Um, we've had meetings with, with just about everybody, but with our members uh, by Zoom, which was an interesting experience for Caroline and myself. Uh, and we hope that before too long we can start meeting people in person again, but probably that's still three or four months away uh, as the pandemic rattles around like a, a summer, summer thunderstorm. So I think it really falls to you and I, Carolina, to say thank you to everybody, um, to wish you all whatever a happy Christmas looks like, and it will, it'll be different for everybody, but make sure it's a happy and a healthy one, and to look forward to next year, because Indeed. next year, He's going to come whether we like it or not, so she meant the most of it. Thank you. Thank you very much.